Here's a closer look at testing for chromosome abnormalities. In every pregnancy, there is a small chance that the baby is affected with a chromosome abnormality. Chromosome abnormalities may either be numerical or structural. For numerical chromosome abnormalities, the risk of having an affected pregnancy increases with maternal age. The most common being a trisomy, which is when there are three whole copies of a particular chromosome instead of two. In contrast, the risk for structural chromosome abnormalities does not increase with maternal age. These abnormalities are when only a part of the chromosome is extra or missing. The severity of the chromosome abnormality, both numerical or structural, can vary greatly and depends on what the missing or additional chromosome material is. Some chromosome abnormalities are severe and can be life-limiting, whereas other chromosome abnormalities are so mild that an affected person may go undiagnosed. There are two categories of tests when it comes to testing for chromosome abnormalities. On screening and diagnostic tests, each serve a different purpose. Both provide useful information regarding your risk. In general, screening tests modify your age-related risk for the most common numerical chromosome abnormalities. Results are reported out as a risk or chance the baby could be affected, but does not determine definitively if the baby has a problem or not. A screen positive result alerts you and your physician that there is an increased risk for your baby to be affected with a particular chromosome abnormality, whereas a screen negative result can be reassuring that there is a decreased risk. Screening tests are non-invasive and involve a combination of ultrasound and maternal blood work. Examples of screening tests include maternal serum screening, non-invasive prenatal screening, and ultrasound. The detection rates vary depending on which screening test is performed. Detection rates are higher in single pregnancies and decrease in twin pregnancies. Most screening tests cannot be performed in higher order multiples like triplets. Screening tests can have both false positives and false negative results. False positive results are when the lab reports a high risk for a chromosome abnormality in a healthy baby. False negative results are when the lab misses when the baby has a problem. Since a screening result does not say if the baby is affected or not, additional follow-up testing is recommended after any abnormal result. Diagnostic testing provides information on all chromosome abnormalities. This includes the most common trisomies related to maternal age, as well as rare structural chromosome abnormalities which are unrelated to maternal age. The sample obtained goes to a laboratory where a picture of the baby's chromosomes are generated for analysis. When indicated, testing for single gene disorders can also be performed. Diagnostic testing provides a definitive yes or no answer on if the baby is affected or not. However, diagnostic tests are invasive and associated with a small risk of miscarriage. Examples of diagnostic tests include chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis. Testing for chromosome abnormalities isn't one size fits all. That's why our team works with you to help decide which tests are right for your pregnancy. To learn more, visit northwell.edu genetics or stay tuned for the next episode.